Hello everyone. Now today we will be discussing about the acute tubular necrosis. And acute tubular necrosis is one of the part of one of the reason, one of the major reason to cause acute kidney injury or acute renal failure. Okay. So since we are talking about acute tubular necrosis, I have already explained in previous lecture also. This is we are talking about necrosis of the tubule. This is due to the acute cause. Okay. And it is the one of the most common cause of acute renal failure, acute kidney injury in hospitalized patient. In the most of the case, it resolves spontaneously if we remove the causes. We if we remove the if we correct the offending causes, and if not, then it will be act as a fatal. It can be fatal. Okay. What will be the feature? The feature will be that since there is a damage in the renal tubule, so there will be a necrosis of the tubule. And since there is a necrosis of the tubule, then what happened? The part of the necrosis, if, since there is necrosis, that part is not working. And since it is not working and it has been sloughed out, so sloughed out and will form, goes into the tubule. So there will be the formation of granular cast. And granular cast is key finding of your acute tubular necrosis. And another point is, since there is necrosis of the tubule, that something the function of the kidney to reabsorb is not present. And since there is function to reabsorb is not present, then what will happen? Then the there will be increased sodium excretion into your urine. So FENA, that is freely excreted sodium, will be more in case of acute tubular necrosis. Okay. Now, since talking about the stages, it has three stages. According to the USMLE book, if you, you go through the USMLE first step, then you will find initiating stage, maintenance phase, and recovery phase. What is which correlates with actually AKI phases that onset, oligary phase, diabetic phase, and recovery phase? It has divided into four phases that onset, oligary, diabetic, and recovery. We will come to later. Okay, so there are the three stages Initi initiating stage, which means that there is a damage. Okay, onset of the damage and that is known as the incidence stage due to the say ischemia or due to the offending drugs or toxin. Okay, then there comes the maintenance phase. If maintenance phase concerned with the oligaric phase, oligaric phase is the phase that lasts for one to three weeks and is depend upon the offending cause, the severity of the AKI or the tubular necrosis, and there is the risks of hyperkalemia, metabolic acidosis, and uremia. So there will be a damage. Patient will have damage, patient will not be aware of it. But when it comes into this oligary phase, and which lasts from one to three weeks, and that you also need to understand okay, if we are going to manage the second tubular necrosis, there will be a oligary phase. We just want to remove the offending cause, and the oligary phase will last from one to three weeks, and also even more longer. It depends upon the severity of the AKI, AKI and the cause of, causes of the AKI, and the risk of risk factor. Of course, in these phases, is that since there is a oliguria, there will be development of metabolic acidosis, there will be development of uremia, and there will be risks of hyperkalemia. And this phase, in oliguric phase, person will present to you. They will say, no, no, doc, I'm not peeing more, or my urine has been shut down, my team, I, I'm just, there is anuria. Okay, so in that stage, you have to know that the person is in oliguric stage, and normally you will have your person in the hospital, so you have to understand that point. Okay, and in oligarchy phase, if you remove the, if you address the cause, then patient will recover and goes into the recovery phase. Okay, whereas here is the diabetic phase, and it is also saying that recovery, when you have cause are corrected, then patient goes into the recovery phase, and it is actually a polyuric phase, means normal, more than normal urine will be P. Normal, normal urine formation will they will increase GFR, they will have and increase urine formation. And because of that, there will be a since in this stage, since there is a oliguria, then there will be increase in banuria and creatinine, the everything will increase. But in this phase, oliguric phase, there will be decrease in body creatinine since urine is more forming. Okay, there is a risk of since urine is more forming and more GFR is there, there will be risk of hypokalemia as well as there will be the wasting of other electrolytes and minerals. So this is the normal normal phenomena, normal mechanism of resolving of your kidney, okay, of your acute tubular necrosis. If you correlate here, then there will be the onset phase which lasts for hours to days and that is 
trillion years it will be present offending drug ischemia that will cause the damage to your place and once damage once occur then they will go into the oligaric phase and it lasts from 8 to 14 days or even longer that depends upon the severity of the AI and this oligaric phase you will find the increased bond and threatening okay and there will be the electrolyte disorder that like electrolyte disorder acidosis and fluid overload that you have to understand very clearly because this phase is more critical phase here is the chances of severity event fatality occur in this phase okay so there will be oliguria, there will be increased bone and threatening, electrolyte disturbance will be there, but oblique acidosis will be there and fluid overload which leads to heart failure, pulmonary edema, other complications will be there. Okay, so these are this is the phase and it lasts for 18 to 14 days, it may last even longer. Okay, then comes after if the of course cause has been corrected, then you can come and enter into the dialectic phase, the offending causes has been addressed. Now it will last for 7 to 14 days and remember this in this phase. Now the renal tubula is carrying and there is edema. So it is improving. There is edematous renal tubule and some of them are healing and there will be the scanning. There will be increase in urine output, but since there is increase in urine output, there is a depletion of your electrolyte. And finally, this comes to the recovery phase. It lasts from months to years. Okay. And so after a year, you don't see that in five days or five, six days there will be improvement. They will come into dietetic phase, there will be increasing and improvement in the creatinine and urea. Okay, there will be decrease in creatinine and urea and urea recovery, that is diabetic phase, polyvary phase. But it does not mean that you have kidney is okay, it's fine. It takes usually time and it's around months to year, even one year. It takes several months to one year to get recovered. And in this, that renal, that is, here in diabetic phase, it was healing and there was edema present. This edema, edema will get decreased and now the kidney will relative will come to the normal states and here GFR will be also 70 to 80 percent. So this is stage you need to understand because your patient this is actually clinical point of view importance because you may present present in any stage and if you, you are not understanding even if diabetic phase the patient will have it here or you will phase you will understand okay your analysis are done but if the time has passed and it is in the diabetic phase then you have also to understand okay I have to address the Offending cause, and I have addresses the offending causes. Now, I do not need to put any drug or any toxin and any many drugs that will again damage the kidney. So, that you need to understand. Okay, and so you learn manage the patient and recovery phase will be normal treatment. Okay, so we have understand about the acute tubular necrosis and it also related with the renal uh, AKI phases that recovery phases. Okay, and same is in. Because acute tubular necrosis is one of the important causes of acute renal failure, acute kidney injury in our hospital patient. So this is the stages what we are what we are correlating. Okay. Now, if it comes to the causes, causes of acute tubular necrosis include ischemic, the most common cause, and that is ischemic is the secondary to the decreased renal blood flow, and renal blood flow will be decreased due to hypotension. There will be some patient may be in shock, which patient may have come with a heart failure, patient may be in sepsis, there will be the hemorrhage due to heart, a major surgery, anything that will lead to your decrease acute tubular necrosis. And this will result in the death of your tubular cell. The most highly susceptible part of injury is proximal coronary tubule and thick as an of loop of your leg. These are most susceptible part for injury. Okay, the other cause are nephrotoxic drug, nephrotoxic anything like secondary to injury result from the toxic substances and that includes mainly the antibiotics, mainly that, that includes your aminoglycoside, even you are going for cholesterol and polymixin, that the groups of antibiotics, other are also nephrotoxic. So nephrotoxic, radio contrast as it. I'll, I, I, I want to tell you that in aminoglycoside, when we are using for a long period of time, then I have found that most of the case they present with it will get you okay and it may in many increases with the age if you are providing this amount of glycoside when the elderly patient then they are 90 percent present with you in the eye, that you have to remember so how much when you are finding that a kidney is damaging okay so you will measure the creatinine level if the creatinine level has increased okay so then you have to understood that AKI is going on and i have to stop this drug as otherwise it will produce progress further and further. Okay, then even radio contrast 
as I, I have seen a lot of patients who when we go to the uh, radio contrast, we give the contrast and do the CT scan, MRI, contrast, MRI, contrast CT. Then in that case, what happened? Due to the contrast, there is the tubular necrosis. Kidney, tubule will get necro and damage. Although these all are reversible cause, because when we address the offending cause, when you remove the offending cause, then the although there is a necrotic, the stem cell is intact, the basement membrane is intact, and new cells can form. But just it takes the matter of time. Okay. So aminoglycoside radio contrast changes, lead poisoning, this plastic anti cancer drug, okay, clean glycol, the dentary phase, that will all are responsible for it, a cuticular mycosis, even cross injury, that myoglobin urea, okay, and hemoglobin urea, these are the toxic to your parallel tubule. That will damage your tubule and cause a cuticular mycosis. Okay, so nephrotoxic drug mainly is the PCT is particular susceptible to injury. So ischemia, PCT, efficacy, and the prima penny. And for drugs, the PCT is particular susceptible to cause injury. So this topic is very important because it is the major cause of your renal failure, acute renal failure, and this is irreversible. And if you know the causes, ischemic and drug, if you address this drug, then it will be reversible and corrected. And present kidney will be set. This is very important and it needs to be understood very clearly. You will have a question on this in your subject. Okay, thank you.